Yeah, my, I'm John Brett, and my challenge is to go beyond self-sufficiency and aim for net zero shared sufficiency. That whakatauki is our collective challenge. Seek the treasures of your heart. If you bow your head, let it be to a lofty mountain. Now, net zero carbon and net zero embodied energy are significant lofty challenges, I admit. But is net zero energy performance lofty enough? I don't think so, especially here in, New in Auckland. So I've created a challenge, Zenit 100, Voluntary Building Performance Standard. Build for zero energy source emissions and net 100% on-site energy generation over consumption. In other words, generate twice as much as you need. Sounds crazy. But guess what? We did it by accident. It's not. It's really easy. We built a new home, as you can see, Tanglewood. And despite what Kermit says, it's not hard. So Tanglewood was originally designed to generate the same amount of energy as we used to use in our previous house, plus 5% to comply with the living building challenge, to be net positive, plus 20% to charge our electric vehicle. So our car runs on sun. As a result, we massive, of the LBC requirements, we massively invested in the, the insulation around the, env the envelope and appliances, efficient appliances. And guess what? Oops. We ended up with generating way more electricity than we needed. We ended up with a handprint that was more bigger than our footprint. As you can see here, 30 kilowatt hours a day roughly generation averaged over a year, but we only use 11 and a half kilowatt hours per day. That's pretty low because of the new building that we did. Um, what's, what's interesting is that now our net export, in, export energy is twice, more than twice, sorry, 160% of our footprint. <clears throat> and something really interesting happens now. When I try and change when I try and reduce my footprint, for example, turning off the heater for one hour, um, saving one kilowatt hour from the, de from the demand, <clears throat> I'm also adding one kilowatt hour into the grid. So that's actually double the benefit of making a small effort to change my behavior to benefit the electricity grid. So reducing our footprint leaves twice as much water in the dams and twice as much coal in the ground. Now that's not just good for me, that's good for we. It also is benefits the past. It off, we think it offsets our embodied energy in the building and in the car. And it benefits the future because simultaneously, because now with, we've got more capacity in the grid for more electric vehicles. So it's starting to sound like it's not a bad idea. So I created the Zenit 100, Zenit 100 energizes shared sufficiency by offering an achievable target. Now, admittedly, not everybody, but for some, it's really easy. This is, this is uh, Tetra Meme. This is a, a framework, a non-linear planning framework that helped us figure out ha how to make Zenit 100 realistic, okay? So first of all, it, it energizes to provide um, motivation. Secondly, it solid solidifies a baseline or a tangible goal for reducing emissions 
and living within our means. That's not a bad, bad thing. But the secret to success is actually in here in the middle. It unifies the approach to generating enough energy and also reducing energy in, in, uh, <clears throat> in what you're using. So that's the beauty of this trying to reach this goal is you have to really co focus on reducing all of the costs and the, and you d d the uh, economy against your desires in order to balance it all out. And what we like to call that is developing an eco-ego. So it transforms an egocentric approach to a more ecocentric approach, which is, you know, just, just um, about considering all of the things that we've been hearing so far, considering the big picture and, and the real benefits, not just to me, but to everybody, to the planet. And it's based on this, on Tetra Meme, this is, our, this is the a full, um, the full uh, diagram, which is the framework, detailed framework, and it helped us bring Zenit 100 from a crazy idea into a practical imperative for some. And... You can uh, download these tools here, and I hope you will join me in climbing this lofty mountain of net zero shared sufficiency. Thank you. Oh, yeah, if you didn't notice that the triangle folds up into a tetrahedron. <laughs> there are no opposites. Everything's interdependent. Right. Yes. Thank you.